Hi everyone. Thank you for taking a moment to watch this video. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes to explain and uh, dive into the innervation of the facial nerve, cranial nerve number seven. Um, I've worked with many students who have had a little bit of a difficult time conceptualizing this and understanding um, how this relates to the physical exam of a patient. And so I wanted to spend a few minutes to uh, create this video and hopefully by the end of the video you'll feel much more clear on uh, this concept. Okay. So uh, to illustrate this, I'm going to use this MR image. And as you can see, um, we can see the cerebral cortex. Uh, we can see the temporal lobes there on the bottom. Can I get my pointer here. You can see the pons, uh, the medulla. Okay. And so uh, with this coronal slice of an MR, let's go ahead and explain and illustrate where the, the anatomy of the facial nerve lies within this image. Okay. So here in the lower part of the pons, we have the facial motor nucleus. This is where the cell bodies of the lower motor neur neurons that supply innervation to the facial muscles uh, reside. And so coming off of the left motor nucleus of the facial nerve, we have the left facial nerve that innervates the muscles of facial expression on the left face. And then same thing on the right. We have the right facial nerve coming from this left, excuse me, right facial motor nucleus, okay? So these are the lower motor neurons synapsing then on the muscles of facial expression. Now, for the purposes of explaining this somewhat confusing concept, um, I have split the nucleus into two halves, an upper half and a lower half. Okay, and this is, help, this is to help illustrate a point, that some of those lower motor neurons that travel with the axons that travel through the facial nerve innervate the muscles of the upper face including eye closure and some of those lower motor neurons have axons that then travel and innervate the lower face not including the eye okay so um, for the purpose of explaining this concept I've, drew, I've drawn here uh, two different fibers coming off, but realize that these two fibers represent the facial nerve. Some of those axons, some of those neurons traveling to muscles of the upper face, and some traveling to the lower face. And this becomes very important here in just a second. You'll see why. All right, so again, lower motor neurons traveling to the muscles of the face. Now, these lower motor neurons receive input or are stimulated by upper motor neurons. So let's go ahead and draw an upper motor neuron here coming from the left motor cortex. Now, if you visualize the homunculus there over that motor cortex, you'll see that this lower motor neuron is coming from roughly where the face part of the motor cortex uh, resides. Okay. So this lower motor, excuse me, upper motor neuron, the axon travels here through the internal capsule down through the pyramidal tract here because this is an upper motor neuron in the cortical bulbar tract and once it gets near to these facial nerves three main branches come off okay three branches now one of those branches goes to the contralateral lower face and two branches go to the bilateral upper face so let me let me draw that here so two branches here one branch going to the lower motor neurons that go to the right upper face one branch going to the lower motor neurons that go to the left upper face, and then a third branch that goes to the lower motor neurons that go to the contralateral lower face. So if this is coming from my left motor cortex, the lower face it receives uh, input and is stimulated by the left motor cortex. Okay. However, that left motor cortex controls both sides of the face, the upper face. Okay. And vice versa, if we're talking about a motor neuron that's coming from the right motor cortex, it supplies innervation to the, mu the muscles that control the upper face on both sides, as well as the contralateral face, the left lower face. All right. So let me explain that just one more time. Hopefully you get it here, okay? The lower face, the muscles that control facial expression on the lower face are only innervated by the motor cortex on the contralateral side, okay? Where the 
mo the muscles of facial expression for the upper face are actually innervated and stimulated by the cortex from both sides. Okay, now why is this important? Now let's kind of try to correlate it to a patient. So let's say we have a patient that we are seeing in the emergency room and this patient is coming in with stroke-like symptoms. And while we're, we're visiting with this patient, we do see they've got a facial droop on their left side. And we notice that the it's only really the lower part of the face that is drooping and they can close their eye on that left side. They can raise their eyebrows on both sides. It's the lower face that's involved. What that tells us is it was the upper motor neuron damaged, okay? So it's somewhere up in the cerebral cortex or most likely in the internal capsule or somewhere along that cortical bulbar track of the upper motor neuron, okay? And so let's, let's draw it here. If we were to have, let's say we had a, a stroke right here in the internal capsule on our left upper motor neuron. Stroke was here. It takes out the upper motor neurons the patient's deficit, if this is left side, will be a right-sided lower facial weakness. But the upper part of the right face should be fine, should still have some strength. And that's because this right face is also stimulated by the right cortex, which is not infarcted during the stroke. Okay? Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Um, however, let's compare that to a patient. Let's say we're going in to assess a patient with facial weakness and we walk in and we see that the patient does in fact have facial weakness. Let's, let's say that it's the right face that is weak and we notice that the upper face and lower face are weak and the patient tries to close their right eye and they can't close it all the way. They can't raise that eyebrow up and down. So it's the part that's involved is upper face and lower face. What that tells us as a clinician is that this is a lower motor neuron problem, most consistent with a diagnosis of Bell palsy, all right? And so because upper and lower face are involved, it can't be an upper motor neuron. Okay, because if it was an upper motor neuron problem, the upper face should be fine because the contralateral brain controls both sides as well. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll try to help answer those. Okay, now I want to illustrate one more point here. Let's draw another neuron here. So this neuron that we just drew, the yellow one here, is an upper motor neuron within the corticospinal tract on the other side. Okay. So where this is positioned within our homunculus of the motor strip is coming from probably right in the hand or the arm. Okay, And as this upper motor neuron axon travels through the internal capsule, it passes through the cortical spinal tract and near to the facial nerve as it passes through the pons. And in the lower part of the medulla, that axon decussates and moves to that contralateral side and then heads down the spinal cord all the way to the spinal cord level to which it's traveling. And at that point, it'll synapse on the lower motor neuron that then travels out to that uh, muscle that needs to be stimulated, okay? And so the reason I wanted to throw this on here, this is an upper motor neuron traveling through the cortical spinal tract because it passes close by to uh, close by that facial nerve there in the pons there is a type of pathology or clinical presentation where a patient can present with facial weakness on one side of the body and extremity weakness on the other okay so if a patient comes into the clinic or into the er with facial weakness on the right side and extremity weakness on the left side, the only place where that lesion can be is in the brain stem and specifically in the lower pons because in order for that to happen, it would have had to hit the facial nerve or the nucleus of the facial nerve as well as the cortical spinal tract that goes to the extremity on the other side because notice the decussation is below the facial nerve, okay? So that's a good question on the boards, really. Uh, they might give you a clinical presentation of a patient with a crossed presentation with facial weakness on one side, extremity weakness on the other. The lesion needs to be in the brainstem, somewhere right there by the pons, okay? Because it hit the lower motor neurons of the face, the facial nerve, as well as the upper motor neuron of the extremities, 
okay? Um, and because it's hitting the lower motor neurons of the facial nerve, that means their weakness is going to be hemifacial, meaning upper and lower face, as well as extremity weakness on the other side of the body. All right. Now that lesion could be a big hemorrhagic stroke. It could be a, a metastatic tumor growing within the brainstem at that level. It could be a, a new acute multiple sclerosis plaque that is formed in that area. Okay. There are several types of lesions that can cause that. But the point that I'm trying to make is that if your patient presents with a crossed presentation, face on one side, extremity on the other, the lesion must be right there in the lower pons. Okay. Um, I hope this has been helpful. I hope that uh, any confusion you had about this topic of lower face versus upper face with the facial nerve and which side of the brain is controlling that was cleared up. But in case not, feel free to uh, post a question in the comments and I'll try to answer those as soon as I can. Thank you very much.